All right, welcome to day two, everyone, for Advent to Code. I am behind. It is uh, like 20 minutes past midnight, so day two is already up. I'm going to kind of skip the intro here. We're just going to get right into it and solve today's problem. The elves begin to set up camp on the beach. Uh, to decide who's, uh, whose tent gets to be the closest to snack storage, a giant rock, paper, scissors tournament is already in progress. Rock, paper, scissors is a game between two players. I understand rock, paper, scissors. Um... Uh, appreciative of your help yesterday, one elf gives you an encrypted strategy guide. Your puzzle inputs uh, that will say uh, that they say will be sure to help you win. The first column is your opponent is going to play A for rock, B for K. Second column, suddenly the elf is called away with uh, help someone's tent. Second column, your reason must be uh, what you should play in response. X for rock, Y for paper, what C for scissors. Winning every time would be suspicious, so the responses must be carefully chosen. The winner of the whole tournament is the player with the highest score. Your total score is the sum of your scores for each round. The score for a single round is the score of the shape you selected, one for rock, two for paper, three for scissors. Plus the score of the outcome of the round, zero if you lose, three if you win, um, three if it's a draw, six if you win. Since you can't be sure if the elf is trying to give you uh, to help you or trick you, you should calculate the score you would get if you were to follow the strategy guide. For example, suppose you're given the follow strategy guide. Uh, the strategy guide predicts, uh, predicts and recommends the following. In the first round, your opponent will choose rock A, should choose paper Y. Uh, this, uh, this ends in a win for you with a score of 8, 2 for plus that. Um, paper, choose rock. Loss for you. Tie. Okay, so if you were to follow the strategy guide, you get a total score of 15. What would be the total score if you follow everything in the, this guide? Okay. <laughs> Puzzle them, but there. So this should be simple as um, as whoops. So this should be simple as just going through and just kind of hard checking this, I guess. So we'll have to do a let's do a long here. This is going to be our score. We'll set this equal to zero starts. And let's just go through all of our inputs here. Um. And it's spaces, right? Separating, yes. So we're gonna do. Uh, we'll actually do char. Might as well. Um, I should say you. Uh, I know it's gonna be opponent. Uh, S dot char at zero, and then because we know that this is gonna be uh, only only one character, we can just kind of skip this and do char at two. That's gonna be you. So given this, we need to know, um, firstly, what you choose and what your opponent chooses. So we need to know win, tie, or lose. Those are kind of our three options. Now, let's, so, cause there is a score element for this. So the total score is one for rock, two for paper, three for scissors. Uh, for what you selected plus if you won or lost so we can do is we can do um, the score so this is gonna be uh, this is, this is, Okay, score is not that bad because we can just take what we guessed and subtract off of I think it's gonna be I Keep doing this where I go back to here One for rock two for, so we can actually do XYZ right so that's be fine. Okay, I'm trying to like put this on my head so Let's first figure out if we win, win, lose, or tie. So if we win is if um, opponents, well, actually, let's convert these all to be, uh, da, 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 da. it's A, B, and C, right? So minus A, and this is gonna be minus X. The reason why we're doing this is I'm converting the char codes there to be numbers. So this will convert it to always be the opponent to be zero for rock, one for paper, two for scissors, and the same thing for us. We're just subtracting off the char uh, A or X depending upon this, and that should help us out here. So what we can do now is opponent um, equals zero, and rock, paper, scissors. So it's actually gonna be one. So we can actually do this. Math.absolute. Now we do need the signage. Um, if opponent minus u. Is this really better if we do subtracting off here? 
I mean, that kind of carries two because that's rock, paper, and scissors. Because if then they pick paper, that means you want... Oh, sorry, if they pick scissors, you want rock. Um, so it kind of goes the other way around. Yeah, let's do this. Then. And or equals to and um, we'll go with that. So this is a win. Um, so score plus equals six plus. Uh, so you get six for a win and then plus u plus one. Um, otherwise, if they are the same, that's a tie, that one's easy. And a tie is three. Um, otherwise, we have lost, which is simple now, because now we can just do um, one, right? It's just this, you just do, you just add this on. You don't do any score plusing. Cool. So that actually gives us our score, and I think that's actually all we need to do. We can just do a lap of, whoops of score, right? Uh, I dig outside. Yeah. Oh, that got moved away. It's fine. I'm with them all. So if I run this now, is this going to give us our correct answer? Nope. Okay. Um, da -da 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 -da. What if I do, this is our input here. We get 15, well that she's actually right. <laughs> okay, so that means there are some uh, extras which I didn't get right. Um, so the opponent minus you, does rock, paper, scissors, Right? Six for win, three for a draw, zero for a loss, one for rock, two for paper, three for scissors. Um, opponent chooses two, you choose zero, not one. That would be, uh, that'd be my mistake there. Sweet, on to part two. Uh, they'll finish helping with the tent and sneaks back over to you. Anyways, the second column says how the round needs to end. X means you need to lose, Y needs, means you need to uh, end in a draw, and Z means you need to win. Good luck. The total scores are kind of the same way, but now you need to figure out what shape to choose so the round ends as indicated. Um, okay, so same thing, but... Now we need to calculate, or we need to figure out what we need to do. So now this is no longer you, this is gonna be the uh, outcome. So, what's the outcome? Lose, draw, or win. So if it's zero, actually this is not too bad. We just do a simply uh, outcome, equals zero, that means we need to lose, which means we need to take our opponents and we need to add one? No, subtract one. Cause, right, rock, paper, scissors, so if they paper, you want to choose rock, yes. So we need to add one, but then remainder three, I think. Um, I think, uh, the pro negatives are always weird. Negatives are always weird with remainders. I, we'll see. Um, let's do this, because I'm just gonna, I, I think, well, well this, this triggers them, but we're no wrong. So that means this is our choice, and what does that mean? Um, so this is our choice then. So our choice is still gonna be, so it's still gonna be this though. So because the outcome is zero, that means we need to lose, right? 
which means um, it's actually just this. Uh, else if the outcome is a one, that means it's a tie, right? Uh, da, 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 da. Y means end of a draw, which is this one. Uh, and draw is easy because a choice is just the same as the opponent. Easy peasy. And then lastly, uh, if it's a two, it's a six, and our choice is going to be this, a plus one. And I'm uh, this one I know for sure will work. I'm just not sure about the negative up here. So let's run this. Hopefully we don't hit an assert. We don't. Good. Throw this in. But we're wrong. Um, did I do this right? Two is a win. Um, is in order to win, the opponent chooses rock, which is zero. That means we need to do paper, which is a one. But a paper is two. So that should be right. Uh, I'm curious now. If I debug this, what am I gonna get? So it's C and X, the outcome needs to be X, which is a lose. So that means our choice is a one. Oh, wait, our choice is one. I want to pick two. No, that's fine. No, okay, no, no, that's right, that's right. Um, I want to see when the opponent has a zero here, this. Our choice is negative one. So this assert didn't work? <laughs> I thought that was the Okay, maybe asserts don't work here. Okay, so it's negative one. All right, easy enough fix though. We can just do simply if uh, choice is less than zero. Uh, choice equals two. Simple enough fix, I guess. I thought that assert would actually work, but apparently it doesn't. There we go. Beautiful. All right, um, again, like I did last time, let me clean this code up a bit. I don't think, again, it might not be much here. Let me try and clean up a bit, and then I will come back here with the solution explanation. All right, uh, I actually ended up cleaning this up a, a lot and condensing it down all into one loop. Um, but in theory, this should still be fine to explain um, in all of that. So our question for today is we are given this rock, paper, scissors game, and we are given by one of the elves a guide on how to play the rock paper scissors uh and this guide is going to have it's going to look like this where the first column is going to be what the opponents uh or what you're the the person you play against what they do for rock paper scissors with a being rock b being paper and c being scissors and the second column having a different meaning depending upon the part for part one this is what you uh as the player are going to throw uh, X for rock, Y for paper, and Z for scissors. In part two, this is what the outcome of the game needs to be. Uh, X for a loss, Y for a win, and Z for a draw. I think I got that right. X, okay, either way. We'll get to that when we get there. But that is what those mean. And then for the for, for both parts, the question is really asking us what our score is going to be. And our score is calculated by... Uh, th these values that it gives us. If we win, we get six points. If we tie, we get three. If we lose, we get zero. But on top of that, we also add in what we threw as our option for that game, with a rock being one point, paper being two points, and scissors being three points. From there, if you add up all of those scores from each game together, that's what the parts are asking us to give. For part one, uh, the way we solve this is again first by initializing a score variable. This is done for both parts here. This is the first part score, second part score. And through that, then we go through and do a for loop. In each for loop, we are now dealing with one separate game instance, which is one line here. We first can, I do some math here to take the A, B, and C, and X, Y, and Z, and convert them to be 0, 1, or 2. This is done by 
simply taking the char at the index, uh, zero for the opponent, and two for being us or the game outcome, and then subtracting off the char of the initial value. In this case, A, which is rock, subtracting that off will give us zero. If you have a B here, that'll be one. If you have a C here, that'll be uh, two. If you don't know how char math works, go, go ahead and Google it. It's not too bad. Basically, chars are just numbers. They make a character. Um, it's nothing too bad, but that's what we're doing here, doing some little char math, convert our character into a number of 0, 1, or 2. Based upon that for part 1, we can now determine upon if we have 1 or if we have tied. A win or a tie, we'll do a tie first. Tie is very easy because we tie if we have the same um, option that the opponent has. In this case, if our option, actually it could condense it even further, just do our option equals um, their option. That's a tie. That one's nice and easy to do. A win is a little bit harder to do. Um, it's for rock and paper. If we have the value that's one above that, which in this case we subtract the opponent by ours, we should get negative one. If we get that, that means that we have one. The other case though is if they throw scissors, we throw a rock, that's two minus zero, that's not negative one. We have to add a special case for this here. Um, but if these are true, that means we have one, we can go ahead and increment the score by six, and then again, to the tie, increment by three. And then regardless about, regardless on both those cases, we always want to add what we threw plus one, because remember, we are doing zero, one, and two for our previous scissors. They have one, two, three for our previous scissor value, so that's why we add one to our value. And that's part one. Not too much to it, it's just understanding how to efficiently determine a win versus a loss given the input values here. Part two works very much the same, but instead of finding the outcome, we are given the outcome, we need to figure out what we threw. In this case, if we if the outcome is a zero, that means it's a loss. I actually ended up condensing this down a little bit, and you'll see kind of what this means. Because I have my values as zero, one, and two for rock, paper, scissors, when the values for the game are one, two, three, that means I can do some little trickery here. Because a loss means that we need to throw the one below that, we simply just don't need to add one to our value here for the score. With the exception being if they threw a zero, which is a rock, we need to throw scissors, which is one less, so that's a negative. So therefore I can just simply wrap it around manually and throw a three instead of what the opponent threw. And that's what this is doing here. That basically just takes the rock pieces scissors they threw, subtract one off, wrap the one around, and then adding one up, and that just condenses down with some nice math operations to this. If the outcome is a one, which is a Y, the this case we need to tie. Tying is easy because we just simply throw exactly what the opponent's already thrown, add one again for the reason above, because we're always one less, and then add three on for the score for a tie. If it is a Z, or in this case a two, we simply add the score of six, because we won. We do the exact same thing we did above here, but because we don't need to worry about the negative numbers when we do the wrapping around, a modulus works fine here, because we have to deal with those negative numbers there. Everything is good. Simply add one to the opponent, throw a modulus on there, so it wraps back around uh, to zero if we, get a th if we get a three, and then add one again to account for our um, off by one. And that's it. Sorry if that was not the best explanation. I'm not fully, uh, <laughs> still a little, yeah. But anyways, there we go. Day two has been done. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys all tomorrow for day three. Peace out.